When you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do. When you're in Myrtle Beach looking for the Italian restaurant of the year, you do as the Romans do. Find out what it's all about. Coming up next on Carolina Pete. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in the conference room at the Myrtle Beach Herald at 4806 Northgate Boulevard in Myrtle Beach behind Myrtle Beach Lighting and Barnhill Realty off the Highway 17 Bypass South. We're focused on Villa Romana Italian Restaurant and we're visiting with its co-owner and executive chef Rinaldo Monterose. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Ronaldo. I don't know if I'll ever absolutely get the pronunciation correct on your last name. Your wife does it very well, and I think you do it pretty well. Yes, if I pronounce it in my Italian way, it would be Monterosso, but in uh, English is Montrose, which is very close. I, uh, I guess a couple of hours were dropped along the line, but uh, I love both names, so uh, and I go with the English name, the American way. So. The spelling is different in, it's a li uh, in Italy. Yeah, it's a slight different. Uh, like I said, a couple of hours were dropped. I think uh, one was changed and one was dropped and kind of made the name a little shorter. And I'm not sure when that happened. Uh, like I said, right along the line a few years back yeah. and uh, just... To change, I would have to go through a long process, which I never, never went through that. Sure, sure. Well, we love it whatever way it is. And yes. I'm sure you've heard it pronounced lots of different ways. Your wife really gets it out well. I just love it rolling off her tongue. We were actually in your restaurant, you know, a few weeks back, filming yes. there. Had a great week of filming. And, yes. and Fran, your co-owner, your yes. wife of many, many years, was with she us. Done, she done very well. I was uh, very pleased uh, for her to get in um, have a little chat with you. Oh, I mean, yeah. everybody's in, in the restaurant, in front of the uh, front part of the restaurant dining room knows my wife. Actually, they see her a lot more than they see me. So I was oh, really happy that she was part of your show. We were thrilled. But we had hoped originally to get you in, but even better, we were ha thrilled that Fran could be there. Yeah. But that's part of the reason I want to make sure we followed up. And, of course, this week in particular, we have Brad Dean tomorrow, you know, our good friend yes. who's the president and CEO there at the Chamber of Commerce. Yesterday, Joe Fisher was with us, Lance Thompson was with us on Tuesday, and Jerry Fouts kicked off the week on Labor Day, which was great. So we've had a great, I hope you had a great Labor Day celebration. I did. Uh, we had a picnic at the house with uh, quite a few people. Bianca was in town, so I mean, oh, uh, great. yeah, it was, uh, it was a great, uh, great weekend. Yes, I loved it. Uh, and it's one of those weekends where you stay busy all up to Sunday and then Monday. Seems like all the all the guest uh, leaves town, and right. we are actually have a slow day. So there's uh, those are the days I actually trying to take for myself. Take some time yeah. for yourself, absolutely. You mentioned Bianca. Share with viewers, of course, viewers who weren't with us la a few weeks ago to have a chance to meet Fran, your wife. Yeah. But uh, Bianca was not with us. Share with viewers a little bit about your. Uh, well, Bianca, she um, she of course she went to a local school, uh, to rather. Um, elementary and middle school and high school and then uh, she went two years at Coastal. She transferred to University of uh, Sacramento in Colombia for two more years. She got a, an undergrad in uh, psychology there and then she moved to uh, California for a graduate and a PhD and actually she's presently working on her PhD uh, in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. She's mm -hmm. actually right. working for the University of North Carolina doing a research for the Department of Education and she's also working on dissertation. So hopefully all this will be over for her by the end of the year. She'll be Dr. Montrosa. Bianca Montrosa, yes, hopefully by uh, before uh, the end of the year. Yes. How exciting, Ronaldo. What is uh, that like for your only child to have, it seems like yesterday that she was visiting yeah, schools in oh, North yeah. Carolina. And, you, you, uh, have been, you have met her while she was still in high school. I, so, I know, uh, of course, uh, I've known her forever. But to think so. about for you, I mean, to have known her literally forever. She's done really, really well. Uh, I think uh, she's, uh, she's very determined to be, uh, to do something with her life, and I think she, and she loves what she's doing. So she's really in a field that she loves to do and, and to, to be uh, part of it, mm -hmm. uh, into the uh, research, which is part of the uh, ed uh, research and education, actually. So she loves to do that, and I'm, I'm really thrilled that she's, follow through and, and she didn't stop but with her master and she just kept on going and, uh, and yeah. finally I think right now she's up to the end of that. Is she a daddy's girl? Uh, 
Yes, uh, she is in a lot of ways. Of course, now she's a little bit older, so she's got a mind of her own. And, oh, uh, yeah. But, of course, in every little thing that happens in her life, she's definitely calls me. Uh, I'm probably the first person she calls and, and let me know and yeah. let me know what's going on. So, uh, in some ways, she is, but she's very independent. Though. She's been yeah. away from home now between California in North Carolina now for almost uh, eight years, so she's uh, right. she's become very independent, doing things on her own. She's sure. And, uh, she, you know, if she, she gets in a bind, then uh, then she becomes daddy's girl. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, that's hilarious. Well, of course, Emma Clara was with us a little bit yesterday here yes. for Joe Fisher. I'm sorry she couldn't be here this morning with you. She'll she's going to come back and spend a little time with us tomorrow okay. when Brad Dean's here to uh, get yes. a little idea of what goes on when we're here filming. Yeah. whether here at the Herald or otherwise. Of course, uh, you've got not only your, your, your baby girl, or who's no longer a baby girl, of uh, Bianca, but also brothers and sisters who are spread out both in, in Italy and, and here in the States. Yes, uh, and I have two sisters that still live in Rome. I uh, try to visit them as often as I can, of course. Right. Uh, when Mama was alive, and she's been gone out for three years, uh, but uh, when she was alive, we used to go over there and make uh, plans to go and visit my sisters, and of course, two kids, two daughters, uh, at least once a year. Uh, I'm not keeping up the tradition once a year, but it seems like I'm still doing it because uh, I was there two years ago with, uh, I remember, with your mom oh, and yeah, uh, with sure. your aunt and a group of uh, customers, were 26 of us. <laughs> 26 and, uh, customers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had a great time, but that year I was in Italy for two times and uh, I was there last Christmas. Uh, so I, I go back as often as I can, uh, even though Mama is not here. You know, still. Is it strange not traveling with Mama Lucia, with your mother, back uh, to Rome? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, in a lot of ways, it is. She was a, a, a good companion. Um, she was. Um, she was. You know, I, I'm sure every every kids will say that the mother is the best and greatest mother yeah, of sure. all. But she was a, a great woman. Uh, it, she was fun to be around with. It. She was a great chef, great cook. I mean, she can make, she can make anything out of anything. I mean, uh, she can actually make, pick up the line and make the best soup or the, or the or mix it with pasta, make the best, best pasta. She can make the line with omelet, uh, with the line and make the best omelet you can think of. It. So, uh, she can almost, she could have done anything with anything and make a great meal. Right. Uh, of course, it could have been maybe because the region she grew up in, which was a little town south of Rome, could have been also she went through the war, and when you go through a war, you have to go through, uh, you have to kind of try to cope with insane. whatever you have in front of you, whatever you right. can find. So it was a different reason why uh, uh, could have been a, 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 she was a great chef, but uh, right. I think she had also her, uh, her heart into what she was doing. Oh, yeah. And uh, that means a lot with everything you do. So, uh, Absolutely. She was yeah. an amazing woman and, of course, the, fa the mother of many. And to think you've got two sisters in Rome. Two sisters in two Rome. Two sisters here in Myrtle two Beach. And, and then my, there's... My brother is also yeah. in Myrtle Beach. And, uh, he's, uh, he's at the restaurant pretty much every day. He doesn't do basically anything. He just... Uh, well, he does does need a prep. He just oh, kind of yeah. me out. I mean... He sits at the house, he's bored, so he right. gets to the restaurant, he helps me out. Maybe if I need something, I ask him to do it. I mean, he doesn't have to do anything. Sure. He's, he's um, a disability, so he doesn't have to do anything. He just, if he can, then it, he helps me out. He, most of the time, he just sits down because he's got problem with his legs. Right. So uh, he's a great person for the phone rings, for him to answer the phone. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. But besides that, he, you know, he used to cook. He used to have his own restaurant, but... Uh, in West Virginia. In West Virginia. Yes. In Princeton, West Virginia. So, but uh, since uh, he retired, he's pretty much off, uh, off the kitchen, off the restaurant. Right. And... Uh, uh, he is at rest and just to help. He's my, pretty much my PR. He's almost becoming what Mama used to do in the dining room, uh, trying to talk to as many customers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Seeing Claudio is a wonderful thing. And, of course, so many folks, if they don't know you, they'll see Claudio walking out there and say, oh, there's the owner. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they exactly. just don't know. They see you. Yeah, uh, which is, uh, uh, which which is, is uh, great. I don't have no, I mean, no grouches uh, about that. Absolutely. Yes. He yeah. is. Uh, and, he, and not that he would ever say that he is, but clearly he... Uh, He's, and he he's mentions your name all the, the time, family, yeah. but he's a great representative for uh, yeah, the Montrose he, family. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. He's got a great personality. He's, uh, he's got the same personality as my mother. You know, right. of course, he could never dance like Mama, but uh, uh, he's 
He has a great personality. Yes, yes. yes. Just like Anna and Rosina, your two sisters who are here in the area, it's great yeah. to have them close at hand. But and of course, your two sisters over there in in Italy. It's amazing yeah. to think about such a big family. You had, I'm sorry to say, another sibling who. Uh, might yeah, correct. she she passed away a long time ago, right, back right. in the, 19, uh, 1980. So it's been a long time. Um, Long time past. So yeah. your mother had seven children? Seven children, five wow. girls and two boys. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, what was that like being there? And, and you were where in the pecking order and all? Um, I was fifth in line. So, Is that right? So you uh, more or the, less the youngest of the uh, brothers. So I, I, I you got your you know, share of I the girls share, that yeah, turned exactly. in on you. Yeah. Got my share, yeah. Um, of course, my brother being older, uh, yeah. cast uh, follow in his footsteps a lot of times. Yes. And... Um, it was an interesting life, you know, with seven kids around the table, plus uh, all the kids always bring friends, so right. mom always had to cook for a oh, uh, yeah. multitude of uh, people besides just the kids. Right. It was always 13, 15 people no. around the table. Uh, so it was, uh, it was an interesting life, you know, and... Uh, uh, That's fascinating. It's a life, well, of course, uh, yeah. uh, and you, your brother was here in the States when you came over. But you have a, a different connection to the United States, uh, is that correct? Another uh, even deeper connection prior to your brother's arrival. Um, well, actually, my brother was in the United States a few, few weeks before I did. I actually arrived before I did, and he, he went to uh, Michigan. And uh, when I arrived in the United States, which uh, I can never forget because on, it was on February 29th, uh, that does not happen. It only happens every four right, years. Of so course, uh, that's right. um, when I arrived in the United States, it was already Michigan, and I, uh, I, it was a cultural shock for me. I moved from Rome, a city of uh, what five million, six million people, yeah. uh, to a little town in West Virginia, which was maybe about twenty five hundred. <laughs> it was not only a language, uh, a language uh, shock Barrier. for me, but it was uh, also a cultural shock. I mean, it was definitely a definitely did not, a life I was not uh, used to it. And uh, what's the most interesting thing of all of that is um, I went to see a, a baseball game, I think it was two days after I was in the United States, and my English was very, very poor, almost none, actually. Right. And uh, I, uh, my sister, both my sister were there. My brother was already up in Michigan, and, uh, and my brother already asked me about moving up to Michigan because it was a much bigger, uh, bigger town where he was at. Right. And uh, when I went to the game, I, uh, I said, you know, I might have to take that offer uh, uh, going up to Michigan because there's something wrong with everybody near. And I look at my sister and I says, uh, Rosina, is there some kind of a gum epidemic going on? Because everybody's got a, a swollen jaw. <laughs> I did not realize that uh, you're chewing tobacco chewing and yeah. everybody has a swollen <laughs> Swollen Joe and, and and I thought it was some kind of epidemic. I yeah. said, no, I definitely need to, <laughs> I I definitely need to get out of here and, and go to Michigan. So uh, what a great well, story! I've never heard that. <laughs> so it was uh, it was quite interesting. I had I had, uh, I had uh, fun. Um, but with you the later language. came back to West Virginia. You I went back Michigan and came I, back. Or? I lived in Michigan for a couple of years and right. I went back to That's West Virginia. That's where you met. I met uh, my wife friend yeah. up in Michigan. I was a. Uh, uh, Back then I was 18, and I used to play soccer once a week with a friend of mine who was a Greek guy, and uh, went to an indoor uh, gym and played soccer. So uh, one evening he took me to a Greek restaurant, right. and a friend was working there. We met, and uh, kind of interesting the way we met will be another, another story. Oh, another it's a time. great story. Fran shared it with us. Oh, yeah. she did? Okay, oh, yeah. So. yeah. 